Hello everyone, welcome to Cam Tie Handmade Creations and another tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to crochet a poncho. So as always, I don't like to dawdle, so let's get started. How is everyone doing on today and welcome back to my channel. We're just going to jump right into it. All tools will be linked in the description box. I'm going to use a category for yarn. This is like a light, like a beige you know, well, very light yarn. It's like, um, uh, what is it called? It's a light white, I think it said on, on the package. But I'm going to go ahead and make my slip knot. And I'm going to chain 10 chains. Well, actually 11, sorry. Um, we're going to skip that first one and have and use and make single crochets in 10 chains. So I'm going to make my 10 chains here. So that we, 11, sorry, so that we can begin making our stitches. So now that we have that chain, we're going to go ahead and skip the first stitch. The chain of your hook does not count as a chain. Skip that first chain and go into the next chain with a single crochet. This section here, we're doing the bottom portion of the uh of the poncho so I'm going to continue with these and I'll be back okay so we have our rows of single crochet here now we're going to chain one and turn your work and we're going to start working in the back loop so there's two loops when you make a, a single crochet or any stitch there's a V on the top of each stitch and there's a front post and a back post. So right here in the back of that stitch is where you would make your single crochet. If you are a beginner and you do not know how to do this, there is a link that I have. Actually, I will put a link up at the top right hand corner so that you can um, look at how to do a back post stitch, whether that's a single crochet or a double crochet. So I will continue and I'll be back. So as you can see, I have all my stitches here in the back post. This is 10 single crochets going across. So I went ahead into my back loops and I made my stitches. So now the best way to tell the difference is you can either use a stitch marker or just count. Make sure that you're counting every row in between. So let's continue. I'm going to chain one and turn my work and do another row of single crochet into the back loop so you want to do this for a few rows i have a total of it's going to come up to a total of 66 from my shoulder to shoulder so i'm going to make 66 rows of these single crochets in the back loop and i'll be back okay i just wanted to stop here after a few rows and show you what this looks like so i love this back loop stitch because it gives it a nice it gives it some depth to it so just continue making these single crochets and when i come back i will have my 66 rows of single crochets in the back loop okay so now i have my 66 rows of single crochet in the back loop now we're going to continue so go ahead and chain two now we're going to work our way sideways going upwards so you want to go into the first stitch with a single crochet and just continue doing that all the way across you're going to put one single crochet into each of these rows so when you get to end to the end you should have 66 single crochets going across for this garment we're now working on the body of the garment this was the waist area the bottom portion now we're working on the top portion of the project so just continue making your single crochets across and i will be back okay so now we have our 66 single crochets going across we're going to chain two and turn your work now we're going to work some double crochets going across your chain your chain does not count as a double crochet normally it's three chains for a double crochet but i don't like 
to have that bulge. So I only chain two for a double crochet and it also depends on the circumstances. So I'm going to go into that stitch. Remember, if your first your chain counts as a double crochet, you're going to skip that stitch and work into the next stitch. So I'm going to skip and go in and make double crochets going all the way across and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my row of double crochets here going all the way across. And again, this is 66 double crochets. So now let's go ahead and continue. We're going to chain two and turn your work. We're going to make a few rows here because we're going to add some front post double crochets. So go ahead and turn your work. Remember your stitch counts as a double crochet. So skip that first one. So make another row of double crochets going across. And when you have enough or when I have enough rows, we'll go ahead and change it up a little bit and make some front post double crochets. So I will be back. Okay, so I just want to show you what it looks like for my beginners when you get to the end. You're going to have those chains from the first time. You made your two chains at the end of the row and turned. You're going to put your hook right into that top stitch. So I'm going to continue on once I do this and make a few more rows of double crochets. So now I have an additional three rows of double crochets and we're going to start working on that front post. We're now at the end of the row so go ahead and chain two and then turn your work. If you're comfortable with chaining three you can chain three that's up to you. So now again, we're going to skip this first chain and we're going to make four more double crochets going across. So skip that first stitch and go into the next stitch with a double crochet. That makes two double crochets because this counts. Keep going across until you have a total of five double crochets, including the chain in the beginning. So once you have your five double crochets, you're going to now make a front post double crochet into the next stitch if you do not know how to make a front post double crochet I have a tutorial on how to make a front and a back post double crochet so once you've made your front post double crochet go ahead and make five more double crochets across and that is your pattern five double crochets across don't forget your count your chain as a stitch and skip one and then a front post double crochet and then five double crochets across. So I will meet you when I get to the end. Okay, so now I'm finishing up this row. I'm going to put one double crochet here and then in my chain from the previous row, I will put a double crochet into that top chain there. Again, if you're more comfortable with chaining three, you can do that as well. That's fine. Chain two. And now go ahead and turn your work. Now I'm going to show you what to do when you get to the other side of your project. You can see the front post here, but it's not really detailed until you do a few more rows. So I'm going to turn this over and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to continue. So now that we're at the other side and your front post double crochet is on the back, we have to make our way around that. So the first thing we're going to do is make our five double crochets. And remember, your chain counts as a double crochet. So go ahead and uh, chain and then skip and go into the next, uh, the next stitch with a double crochet. That gives you two double crochets make um, two more double crochets and then one more for a total of five now your front post is in the back so you just simply take your yarn and this is what's considered a back post double crochet you're going to go behind that stitch and come out the other end pull up a loop and make a double crochet and that's how you do that section so now after we've made that back post double crochet, you just continue on making five more double crochets and just continue this pattern. 
you can turn it around if you need to flip it over so that you can see your work but I'm going to continue on and I will meet you at the end when I have a few rows okay so I'm back and I have about about three two three rows of these front post uh, double crochets so now we're going to continue on you can make this as long as you want this. This is completely up to you how much length you want to give it and how much you want to give put in how many front post double crochets you want to put into your work. So we're going to continue on with this. I actually stopped and made a few more rows of double crochets so that we can continue on. Okay, so now we're going to work on the shoulder portion of your work. So simply remember your chain counts as a double crochet. Skip that stitch and go into the next stitch with double crochets. We're going to make 13 double crochets going across and that includes that chain 2 that you have at the beginning of your row. So make 13 double crochets going across and I'll be back when I get there. Okay, so we are at where we need to be. I have 13 double crochets going across. Now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitches. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our slip mark up our stitch marker in the other side so that when we're doing our slip stitches, we know where to stop. So now I'm on the other side of the garment. I'm going to count out 13 stitches. And in my 13th stitch, I'm going to place my stitch marker. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. 12, 13. So put your, in your 13th place, put your stitch marker in there. Now right here is where you want to stop with your slip stitches. So when you come across, when you get to this side, you're going to stop right before that stitch marker. So let's begin putting in our slip stitches. I'm going to speed this section up. I'll do a few and then I'll speed up here because this is, everybody knows how to slip stitch. So let me continue and I will be back. Fly with the stars, I'm free. Party all day, every weekend. Make it boom, boom to the beat. Make it boom, 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 boom. Fly with the stars, I'm free. I'm free okay, so I have my slip stitches in here. And now I have my 13 double crochets. I've, after I did my slip stitches, I went in and made my 13 double crochets. So this is what we have so far. This is what she looks like. This is the neck portion where we slip stitched is the neck portion. And these are the side of the shoulders where you put your arm so that it can rest comfortably on the top of your shoulders. So we're going to continue on. This is the other side. And we're going to work on bring Now remember you have to make two panels when you're making this poncho. You have to make two panels. So I've already done my other panel. I'm going to snip this off. And now we're going to work on bringing them together. So those 13 stitches you just made on the side is just simply so that your poncho can rest on your shoulders comfortably and not be too tight or too loose that's where your measuring tape comes in that's why you need to measure to make sure so we're going to bring these two pieces together and go ahead and sew them together so this is just the section just the shoulder portion so those are the only two pieces that you are sewing together are the section so remember you're making two panels and those two panels you're going to bring together so i actually have this inside out and um because i want those stitches to be up underneath there so i'm going to grab my darning needle and start i'm a bit clumsy today sorry and start um weaving in these two panels together so naturally just like normal um way of sewing i guess it is i'm not a seamstress so i don't know but just take your darning needle and put them through both all four of those stitches that's the two stitches for the front panel and there's two stitches for the back panel just bring it through 
pull your yarn through. I think the stitch is called a whip stitch. So I guess because you're going through and then bringing it around and coming back through those other two, it's called a whip stitch. Uh, that's my guess. Um, so just keep making your whip stitch, keep going around. You're going to go all the way to the end and then bring yourself back over again, come back um, to the other side again. And that's just to make sure that it's nice and secure. So I'm going to do this and I'll be back. So now I'm at the end and I'm simply just going right back across again. I just want to make sure that these stitches are good and tight. Well, not so much as tight, but secure so that they don't come apart so that when you wash it, it won't fall apart. So I'm going to continue this and I'll be back. Now we have those two panels together. It doesn't even look like we sewed anything and that's what it should look like. Now we're going to start working on the neck portion. I'm going to switch out my yarn. This is like a beige yarn. I'm going to link everything in the description box. But you want to go into your first single crochet with your hook. Actually, I'm going to go into the space that brings those two panels together so we can secure it really quickly. And go ahead and make a slip knot. And then right into the same stitch, you're going to make a single crochet. Now make your single crochets all the way around for as many rows as you want to, even when you get to the corners. So this is what mine looks like after I've made a total of three rows. You can make as many rows as you want. You don't even have to put rows if you don't want to. That's what I love about this poncho. It's very versatile. You can change it up to however you like. So I'm going to come up with a few more rows to show you what that looks like and I'll be back. So I'm back and I did do some decreasing in my rows here. As you can see it starts off wide and it makes like a bit of a curve. So I decreased and then I increased. I will be coming out with a video on how to increase and decrease your stitches. But this is what that would look like when you fold it under. So in the winter time when it's really cold, you can lift it up or you can fold it down so that um, to your liking. I'm actually going to make a few more rows and make it a bit wider. So I'll be back. Now we're going to go ahead and work on these arms here on the side. Again, this is optional. You can leave this section closed if you want to. I mean open if you want to. It's completely up to you. So what I did was I went ahead and measured around my arm with my measuring tape to see how long that would be. It's about six inches up under my underarm. From my shoulder to under my arm, it's about six inches. I'm going to add an additional inch to that just to have some breathing room under my arm. So now take your measuring tape and go ahead and grab it and put that one inch mark right up at the top, right where the shoulder would be, right kind of behind the shoulder, and then go ahead and measure. So again, when I measured, um, it gave me six inches, but I wanted a little bit more room um, to have up under my arms. So I'm going to make it seven inches. You measure, use your measuring tape if you need to. If you already know, just go ahead and do that. But I'm going to be back because I need to put my stitch marker in that place. So now that I have everything measured out, I'm going to grab my stitch marker and put this right here in the seven inch mark. The reason we do that is so that when we work on the bottom portion, bringing this bottom section, the side section together, we want to stop at a certain point. We want, don't want to go over because then that arm portion will be too tight. So I'm going to slip my stitch marker in here and I'll be back so we can begin. So now I have my stitch marker in its place. I'm going to go ahead and put my loop, my loop, my hook into this place right here into this section. And we're going to make two single crochets going across. And this is just to give it a nice edge going around that arm portion. So I'm going to put two single crochets into each of these stitches. 
The reason I'm doing that is because these are double crochet rows. These are the rows when you made your front and your back panel. That's what these rows are. So we're going through one panel and we're going to go all the way around the arm with two single crochets and I'll be back. So now we have our two single, we have all of our single crochets here. I'm just doing these last couple of stitches here. Now take those two ends and bring them together. Put your stitch marker in there and go ahead and slip stitch. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a quick slip stitch and a chain one. So now this section is completely up to you. You can keep going around and make it a big sleeve, a long sleeve if you want to. But I'm going to continue with just a few more rows going around and I'll be back. I did first want to show you how to start off the row once you get to the end and slip stitch where to go ahead and put your hook. So now we're at that end there. We put the slip stitch in and chained one. Now just go right into that same space that you made for your single crochet and continue on. You're only putting one single crochet into each stitch going around. Okay, so this is what I have. I did about five more rows, I think. And just to show you what that sleeve looks like, again, you can continue on and make it much longer or just maybe do a couple of rows. You don't have to do this many rows. Again, this poncho is versatile and you can change it up to however you want. So now let's go ahead and work on the area that's underneath the arm. Um, we're going to bring these two panels together again with a whip stitch. We're going to turn it inside out. And let me do that real quickly so we can get started on that section. So now I've turned it inside out. And we're going to start with this very first stitch in the beginning of the row and bring them together. Just insert your hook, just like before, I'm sorry, <laughs> your needle, and bring through your yarn. See, I went all the way through. Be careful not to go all the way through with, just give it about a couple of inches to the end so that you can still work. And then just do what we did before, bring your uh, needle around and go ahead and go into the next stitch and make your way all the way up to the armpit. So I'm gonna continue this and I'll meet you when I get right to the armpit. Okay, so now we're at the armpit and I'm just gonna go into that next, um, into that next row just to make sure that I got it nice and tight and those holes are closed up. You can do this however you want, however you're comfortable with doing it. The whole purpose is to make sure that those two panels are together and that there's no gaps. So I'm done with that portion there. I went ahead and sewed those together. Again, this is an option. You don't have to do this, but I just like for it to be a little bit more sturdy and having something on the side. So I'm going to bind off. And that's what that looks like. You can't even tell that it was brought together where it's brought together. It flows very nice. So now just keep going. Again, you can make those arms as long as you would like. I am quite pleased with this. You cannot see the seam or anything like that on the inside. Okay, so now just turn your work over and do the other side in the same way. Your sleeves and that bottom panel. Once you've done that uh, section there, you're going. we're going to go in with some single crochets. And this is just to give it a nice finish off a nice edge if you want to use a different edge you can if you don't want to put any edging on it you don't have to i just wanted to show you that i'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook i did go down in size because i don't want that stitches those stitches that i'm going around with to be too um, loose or too big so now make your way around and um, you can crochet in that tail if you want to or just wait until later and weave it in but go ahead in with your stitches your single crochets and I will meet you when I get 
to the other side. It's just a single crochet into each of these side panels, these single crochets, and then two single crochets into the double crochet rows. So right now we're heading into that double crochet row. We're going to put a single crochet here. And then another one in the next one. And now we're headed into those double crochets. So in those double crochets, you're going to put two single crochets in each of those double crochet rows. And so I'm going to make my way around and I will meet you when we get to the end. Remember, once you get to that single crochet portion of your rows, go ahead and start putting in two single crochets and I will be back. Okay, so I have all my single crochets going across around the side. Now we're making our way around the corner. So again, when I got to my single crochet section, I just single crocheted all the way down. Now we're going to work on the side portion going around this corner here. So to do that in a smooth way, you want to add a couple more single crochets to this last crochet, to this last single crochet so that we can round the corner better. So I'm going to put two single crochets in this section here, which gives it three and then just make my way around. So now we're back at the end. And now that we're at the end, we're going to go into that next stitch. One more crochet, one more single crochet, two single crochets in that last stitch when you make your way all the way around. Chain one and then now simply slip, slip stitch into that next stitch. And that's the first stitch of that entire row going around your poncho and chain one. You can do another row if you want, but I just did one row and left it at that. So this is what we have. We have our nice single crochets going around. They're coming around this corner. Very nice. And again, you don't have to do these edges, but I think it just cleans it up much much better as opposed to as opposed to leaving it alone so again with your arms you can continue out and come out a little further if you want to but I decided not to do that so I'm going to show you the next section and what that looks like I came up a few more rows I think I have about 30 rows here but you make as many as you want so I want to thank you for watching this tutorial Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Cantai Handmade Crochet. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye. Fly with the stars, sound free. Party all day, every weekend. Make it boom, boom to the beat. Make it boom, 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 boom.